You guys remember PBS, right? Wasn't every show on there so amazing? There was never a terrible show on there. Not one- Huh? Who's there? Somebody's coming. Stay back! I'm warning you! Okay, I lied. Even a golden goose like PBS Kids can lay a few bad eggs once in a while. One in particular I will go over today is Booba. Oh boy, how do I even begin to describe this nightmare? Booba is a British television show created by the same people who made Teletubbies, which explains a lot. This show aired between 2003 and 2006 and was created for children between the ages of 3 to 6 years old to encourage them to get more active. The episodes are extremely formulaic. They begin with the Booba ship coming down to greet the children of their cult, who do some kind of bizarre fever dream dance. Then children send their offerings to the story people, who are unable to share a sock to save their lives. And then the Boobas do one last dance and fly off to recruit more children into their cult. Okay, maybe I'm being rude by saying this show has cultish vibes, but Honestly, the whole thing feels bizarre. There's very little dialogue throughout the entire thing, and everything is so oversaturated in color. Any sections featuring people just have tiny groups in desolate areas. Honestly, the sound design and visuals are a bit creepy too, especially from the boobas themselves. Jumba! Okay, before we get too ahead of ourselves, I guess let's dissect the two main segments and analyze them to see what went wrong with them. The booba section and the story people section. Even as a kid viewing the booba sections, I had no idea what the point of the booba section was. They just dance around in oversaturated environments and make clicking and farting noises the whole time. Looking at it now, and knowing that this was meant to get kids physically active, I now know that they just failed miserably. There is no encouragement from the show to dance along with them. Sure, kids in the show jump around at the booba ship, but there's nothing to encourage kids to dance along after the fact. And with the strange atmosphere, it's more likely to just make you hypnotize into just staring at the television screen and trying to remember who's Humba and Zing Zing Zingba. Okay, maybe some kid out there got up and danced with this mindless garbage, but given my experiences as a kid, I was at the high end of the target audience at the time, and my younger sister was in the low end of the target audience at the time. Neither of us got up to dance to this. We just stared at this mindlessly while waiting for the next show to come on. I'm sure we're not alone in this either. This is just too weird and freeform to encourage kids to do anything. And as mentioned earlier, the visuals of the Booba's beady eyes is probably too creepy for some kids. I know it was creepy for me, ugh. Okay, let's move away from these creepy sacks of fermented toe jam and move on to the next segment. <laughs> The story people section is just... bizarre. That's the best way to put it. I don't even know if this segment or the booba segment is more weird. The story people section features kids sending a random gift to a pocket of reality filled with people called the story people. The main characters of this segment are the very generic Mrs. Lady, Mr. Man, Grandmama, Grandpapa, Brother Sister, Auntie, and little dog Fido. We did watch as one or more of the story people interact with the random gift that the children sent to them. This is the only section of the show to feature any sort of dialogue, typically from the narrator, who sometimes utters something like this is some sort of BBC nature documentary. As you can see, these fascinating specimens called the story people are attempting to interact with this jump rope, though they're failing quite miserably. Though, parts of this segment are pretty much just gibberish and sound effects. 
Most of the time, these interactions result in some sort of a fight or a problem arising. Instead of trying to show ways to realistically solve these problems, the kids outside the story people world end up using magic to solve their problems for them. This doesn't teach children anything about sharing, problem solving, or anything along those lines. Maybe it teaches them how to use these objects? Or what these objects are called? But that seems a bit strange for children between the ages of 3 and 6. Especially close to the age of 6, as kids would be in first grade at that point. They'd know the alphabet by now. The segment is even creepy, too. The entire area is just desolate, like this is some pocket of reality only these few individuals live in. And I can't be the only one that gets freaked out from... Somebody's coming. And like I said, this has even less of a point than the booba section. Honestly, this show doesn't seem like something for children between the ages of 3 and 6. It seems like something for kids 2 or younger. But of course, they don't want to advertise that they're promoting a show to children that young. But even as a show to children 2 or younger, this is a bit of a failure. PBS Kids shows should fall into one of two categories either being educational or entertaining. These elements can overlap, but one of these should be present. On an educational standpoint, there is no education to be had. The story people, as mentioned, don't show any moral lessons or problem-solving skills. They fight and flail around helplessly until magic solves their problems for them. And as for encouraging kids to be more active, there isn't enough encouragement for kids to participate. It's like if you were watching Blue's Clues, but instead of Steve asking for kids to look for clues and solve problems with him, he just searched for random clues with no explanation and then solved the mystery for you. As for entertainment value, this is just the equivalent of shaking keys in front of a kid. There is no stimulation with story or characters. There isn't even actual dialogue 75% of the time. It's mindless colors and movement. Not to mention the segments drag on for way too long. There's only so much time you could stand to watch a bunch of fur bags dance around, or see a group of incompetent people jump around in giant socks. If this keeps children entertained, it will only be for a couple minutes, not the entire 22 minute episode. The point is, on a stimulation standpoint, this is not challenging enough for kids in this age group. By kindergarten, I was watching Arthur, Sagwa, Cyber Chase, Liberty Kids, Between the Lions. Shows with more education and entertainment, I craved more engaging stories and more challenging education. Even my sister, who would have been between the age of 1 to 4 at this point, was more interested in other shows that were more stimulating. I'll be real here, there's only a couple kudos I could give to this show. One, it's at least not promoting anything negative. And two, it at least had the right idea. Actually, this doesn't make it any better. While it had the right idea, it completely failed and didn't bother with any sort of improvement in its future seasons. It's a lazy formula and doesn't promote anything. And with it not even showing anything negative, it just makes it boring and forgettable. Even Barney, as superficial as it was, attempted at a couple points with negative points in life. Caillou, despite being a terrible influence to children, opens up discussion between children and parents about what is and isn't okay to do. What does Booba do? nothing. It's mindless and forgettable. Okay, let's just wrap up this nostalgia trip with the report card. The visuals are awful. The puppets are creepy, and the backgrounds are oversaturated. Things don't feel well put together. There is no education value to be had. The point of the show completely misses the mark. The overall vibe of the show is too bizarre and creepy. The lack of dialogue and story makes this unstimulating. The dragged on segments make it feel like a chore to get through. I suppose it doesn't promote anything negative. However, it makes the show forgettable and pointless. The overall grade I'll give to the show is a D. You'd think that I'd give it an F after how much I roasted it so far. However, the only thing saving it from that territory is the fact that it isn't harmful. Pointless, boring, and stupid, sure, but it's not harmful. It won't live in history as being a great show or being a horrible show. Okay, perhaps a horrible show, but you know what I mean. 
Once the generation that grew up with this show passes, no one will remember it. We'll just say, oh, that show was weird and creepy, and move on. It's not an utter failure, but it deserves to be forgotten and lost to time. In fact, you know what? Be gone with you. You're nothing more than a pathetic fad of the past. You have no power here. I guess it's time for me to dispose of these abominations. However, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for the next nostalgia trip. If you want to see more doses of nostalgia, click the playlist here. If you want to see what YouTube thinks you would like, click this video right here below. Until next time, this is Dance Macabre, signing off.